doesn't like the light. If I hold that up, can you, can you see? It's a little yellow organism. It oats. It likes oats. Indeed it does. Collective behaviour um, is a really big thing with, with this organism. The slime mould leaves this trail behind it, indicating where it's been, um, which is another form of extended body. So you're going to create an environment for the slime mould to navigate. What kind of questions might you like to ask of your slime mould? And this is why I really like working with this organism as, as an artist, is I, I can predict its behaviours. I, you know, I understand what it likes and what it doesn't like, and I can predict it, but I cannot control it, and it always surprises me. The one you've done, just done has been a made-up environment. This is going to be relatable to the real world. And we're going to imagine what attractants and repellents might be find in our local environment. So you can choose, you can think about what your kind of state of perspective is, human or non-human, slime mould or other. I mean, in the natural habitat, it would uh, feed on rotting vegetation. <laughs> I've got an ant's nest in my compost. It's a dry That's smell. The... This may be dog shit. Oh, mm. nice. Put plastic bags of dog yeah. shit yep, in the, yep, 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 in yep, the compost. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a mixture of attractants and repellents yeah. here. Though I don't know how slime mold feels about poo. No. I should think it would be favourable. It might be. It might, yeah, it might. I mean, it has lots of bacterial content, mm. and the slime mold is digesting the bacteria. It's moist. It's very moist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when we come back, we will then translate your observations, your conversations, the meandering walking that you've been doing. Um, we'll translate it to the agar. humans are exploring this neighbourhood, this is our sort of petri dish, it's not so bounded perhaps, or maybe it is, we, we should, we'll find out. Uh, and then there's another scale of play which we're going to be um, tracing this with the GPS. And the GPS is a system of satellites that are 40,000 kilometres up there. So there's, a, there's really a, there's like a really different levels of, of scale of play, you know, some quite immense ones and some quite sort of tiny ones. There's the ranges which take too long and there are the ranges that happen too quickly. So, you know, with all, within all these things, there's always a sort of a, a sort of overlaps of, you know, where different organisms have their sweet spot. Or you could decide that you kind of mark certain points as, as you travel. But the idea would be that we wouldn't have to keep each other in sight so much, 
but we have a sense of where other people have been. So it's a bit like the trains as you showed us yesterday. not this, the, the way we make hierarchies and we make measurements and the slime mold just doesn't do that. We never know how high we are till we are asked to rise. And then, if we are true to plan, our statues touch the skies. The heroism we recite would be a normal thing, did not ourselves the cubits warn for fear to be a king. <laughs> 